first off, I do apologise for the clickbait. It's not like me. Um, if you're just here for this, I'm not done. I'm not finished. But videos are probably going to be slowing down quite a bit in the next few months. I've probably noticed my uh, content is very sporadic and that's largely down to weather actually, it's just obviously completely out of my hands. I've had like six weeks gone by and zero opportunity to get out with anything. Outside of that, I uh, need to say this, I, I hate this as in video editing. I absolutely hate it so much, everything about it, it's, it's just not something I find fun or enjoyable. Uh, but unfortunately I have to do it. And even outside of that, I've got other things going on in my life, sometimes my own health isn't so great. So this hobby quite often just falls by the wayside. So again, I'm certainly not done with this channel, but releases are probably going to be slowing a bit. I really hope nobody's gotten used to actually seeing me a bit more frequently, because uh, I wouldn't be getting used to it. However, I just even looking at my analytics and just comment subscribers, I seem to have picked up some soul momentum and I feel like I'm becoming something of a more proper channel. You know, I've always felt like I just get random views and massive periods with absolutely no views, but I feel a little bit more established now. So I'm thinking of changing up my style of video quite a bit. I should say, I, I don't do commentary. Even this feels a bit strange, to be honest. But I got a lot of views and watch time and appreciation on my design video, which I wanted to make a part two of, but I think there's going to be much more coming with that now. I've got it kind of planning out just now. I should say I've published a lot of information on RC groups, but n nobody cares about it. So, you know, if, if ever you want some of my more detailed thoughts uh, on these kind of things, you know, my projects, you can always go and read that. But I, I, again, I'm kind of used to it being a bit ignored. So, so pretty much all of my hovercraft videos are just, it's just videos, just watching a thing kind of bounce about the a field or whatever. And I, I don't really talk, you know, there's no overlays, there's no fancy editing, I'm not really giving my thoughts on what's actually going on. I might at most put some text on the screen or I'll usually put stuff in the descriptions, but again, nobody reads them, um, so, so much for that. So I don't know what people might feel about me just doing more uh, commentary, um, so I might have a five minute video and it's, yeah, still f f five minutes of commentary and explaining things and maybe doing some more playing video back, examining what's actually going on, rather than just letting it play out silently. One of the issues is I, I, I don't know what my audience actually thinks, you know, I could ask right now. People that are listening to this, t t tell me in the comments, what, what do you think of my videos? Do you want more commentary? Do you want me to explain things? Are you sick of my videos just having no real context or explanation behind what's going on? Do you appreciate it that you can just watch it without, you know, any interruptions? I don't know. Now, I'm not saying to the people listening to this that are going to comment not to comment, but it's selection bias in that if you ask if you, if you ask YouTube for, you know, their opinion on your videos, you're not getting the opinions of people watching your videos, you're getting the opinions of the people that have heard your request for their opinion and are actually going to bother commenting it. So I'm not saying not to do it. Maybe you're speaking for the silent majority, but if people would like more explanations, more commentary, you know, I'd really like to know. It'd certainly be a good motivator for me actually doing it, because uh, I, I don't want to purely from an effort point of view, because just audio editing, video editing, animation, designs, CAD, I just hate it all so much. But again, it's necessary, so I'll do it if I feel like it's actually going to be appreciated. So normally what I would do in a video is I'm, I just play video um, like this. This is a kind of modified recent design. I normally just watch it going about like so. So rather than this, I wonder what people think about more like this style. This is my first time with this in an open space and I'm just very much getting used to the handling here, keeping the lift power low over the grass. Don't need maximum lift, don't use it. It handles little transitions like that very well. Well, it essentially doesn't notice them. It doesn't, it's not like a skirt doesn't care if it's on grass or gravel. It's just floating over it all the same. Again, just getting used to turning. I'm staying away from the long grass just now. That is coming. Uh, but for now, I'm just enjoying drifting about. It's a little bit slightly uncontrollable on the, the slope. That's always been a problem. Getting a little bit more ambitious here, see I've picked up a little bit of damage at the back. It's not a big deal, but that's definitely a vulnerability there. So there's quite thick grass, it's dragging a little bit, but it's really not a huge issue. 
that nose bonk, uh, we'll be coming back to that. I'm a bit more comfortable with the handling now, I'm getting more used to how the thing behaves. Pushing the lift power up and uh, again, you notice when it's on the grass, but it's not bogging, it's not getting stuck to a small extent, but you know, it's not having any big issues and that's certainly not the case for a skirted craft on this. You get that nice aggressive snapping turn round, but it's it's not destabilising it when it's turning. You know, it's quite, it's quite clean as far as these things go. But again, just getting up onto the grass, trying to find even thicker stuff now. And again, there's no real problems there. Quite elegant, except uh, <laughs> trying to turn around there. The momentum really gets away from you. And it's not good. That's actually something of a downhill slope we're looking at here. So yeah, you, the thing will just slide away from you in an instant. And you've got to keep on top of that. But again, just finishing off with a little turn around on the grass. So I'm now going for the thicker grass. And we're going to start to see a few problems emerge. Uh, one in particular, which I'm going to explain in a little bit. But again, on that grass, you know, turning around, picking up speed, it's not really an issue. Here. So I call that a nose bonk. Uh, the thing's just crunching into the ground there. And if you look closely, it's actually really caught the edge. And if I'd actually uh, broke off a little bit later, it did quite a bit of damage. I'm debating where this kind of side wall sticking out for. It's not really the best design. And that's among the reasons why, but it's not actually the big issue here. So to understand a bit more why this happened, the original design, I keep saying original design, this thing's been through so many iterations, but originally it didn't have that third motor at the tail. If you looked at the thing in cross section, all I had was a flap at the front, a flap at the back. And the initial controls are really simple. Throttle would open up uh, the rear flap, and the idea's elevator stick was on the front flap. So if you have the throttle flap, the rear flap, open, if you want more speed, just elevator forward, it'll close up the front jet, and it'll kind of keep the nose down and give you a little bit of extra speed. Likewise, if you needed to back up, you can close the Easy to slow down, stop, reverse, you can close the back flap, open up the front one. When I added the third motor, I had a little think about how to mix it in, and I just thought, I'll just put it on the elevator channel, makes sense, you know. And for full forward speed it does, because you want the, you want the thrust motor to be spinning up at the same time as the front flap's closing, that gives you maximum forward speed. But a bit of an unintended consequence that when I'm coming down this slope, the motor's on, uh, the front flap is closed, so you've got effectively no proper air cushion there. You've got the ram air effect, and that's fine on flat ground, but when it's just coming down off the grass, you, you want that front flap open a little bit. You, you need that jet to establish some sort of air cushion. Otherwise, the, the ram air is just not enough to stop it from smacking into the ground. So. What I've subsequently done, and it's coming in another video, is I've just altered the mixing, which is very easily done on OpenTX, where essentially the first bit of elevator stick only powers up the motor, and it's only the last bit of elevator stick that actually closes up the flap. So it means you can basically decide uh, you know, what to do with it. So that was my first attempt at a proper commentary and examination of what's going on. And that was exhausting um, as a kind of highlighted 2D animation. Uh, I'm using Synfig is basically completely new to me. I've got a very long way to go to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, but, you know, it's a start. Uh, from here it's only going to get better. And all the editing and everything just... Oh, I'm exhausted right now. One of the things about recording this over multiple nights is probably notice my voice keeps changing depending on what mood I'm in. So just now I'm quite elated at having got that done. But that's the style of video I think I'm going to be going for further forward. So hopefully more engaging, but it's going to just push the editing even longer and longer. I've actually got tons of stuff to edit now. 
um, equal parts very excited but also absolutely dreading having to edit all together and start you know commenting on it and doing more animations building up my skills um, but again if people are going to like it and I imagine they probably will I hope they will uh, it's going to be worth that then so less frequent uploads but the uploads that are going up are I think will be a bit more interesting something else I've been using a lot of 3d printed parts but I've all designed myself, prototyped myself, and they're very handy. And most of them, I feel like if somebody needed them, they could recreate them. They're just talking, you know, small plates, linkages. But if people actually wanted me to start putting up, you know, STLs or the actual CAD file, they do it all in Fusion 360, I would actually think about that. Uh, again, there's probably people that want it, but whether those are the people that are actually bothered listening this far, I'm not sure. But I'd absolutely um, I'd think about it. I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. It's just the effort involved in you know, organising the files and uploading them, etc. But if people were really wanting it, yeah, I would do it. Same goes for transmitter templates. I'm on Tyranus OpenTX. It's actually like a <laughs> eight-year-old original Tyranus, which is still going. It's had quite a few upgrades in its time. Again, most of the control on these small hovercraft is very simple. You're talking four channels, very basic mixing, but there, there's definitely a few bits that are a little bit less intuitive, and especially the kind of big, you know, t t ten flaps. It's, well, eight flaps, it's going to be getting more. That's a lot of mixing in that, and like weird logical switches, which there's a reason for them. So if people wanted me to pop up a few templates, uh, again, that's it's not too much work. I just kind of... Uh, <laughs> you need to know if anybody actually cares, uh, but I'll probably all get around to it at some point. 